All right, well, just about a minute later, and I found some burdock. This stuff grows everywhere, though. It's not that big of a deal. But you can look online and find an ID for this. But the main thing is it has a light underside, and the underside is has fine hairs all over it. You can eat the root, like this one. I could probably dig this up because it doesn't have a central stalk coming up with the burrs all over it. I'm sure you've probably gotten burrs on you when you're out in the woods, those big round Velcro-like seed pods. That's what this is. But I'm told if you harvest the roots of the plants, that don't have a central stock coming up you can eat them I harvested a couple this spring and they didn't look very appetizing to me so I didn't eat them but I guess it's a important plant to keep in mind one thing you can do I've seen guys on YouTube and stuff do this and I'm gonna try it uh, the next time I get, go out fishing and camping is you can take these leaves and uh, wrap your food in them like potatoes what well, I'm gonna do fish and uh, just take five or six of these big old leaves and wrap your food up really good <clears throat> and you can uh, put that you know right next to the fire and cook your food inside of it also, you could take these, I mean, these leaves look pretty nasty because they're right beside this trail, but you could take these leaves out and lay them on the ground and have a place to uh, prepare your food or something. You know, if, you, if you're out at a campfire and you don't have a table or a, a, a tablecloth or something like that, you can kind of use this in place of a tablecloth to keep your food from getting dirty while you prepare it. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to keep cutting this video on and off as I go and hopefully piece it together later. It's going to be pretty choppy, but mainly just want to show that you can just get out and walk down a, a mile stretch of trail and find probably a hundred different edible plants. And the only real trick is keeping track of where they grow and coming back uh, when it's harvest time and picking them. <clears throat> so I'll cut this off and meet you down there where the blackberries grow. Here's some more of that Chinese lantern or ground cherry. This is a nice little patch of it. There's quite a few here. And I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this is smooth ground cherry, according to Peterson's field guide. It has a dark center on the yellow flower, but that's something I need to research a little better but I do know that's what they are. I'm gonna rip one of these open and see what's inside. Yeah, there's the little berry. It's inside these husky pods. And it's kind of hollow and yucky inside, so I don't know. Here's another one, and it's not hollow. 
It's firm. It has a bunch of tiny little seeds in it. It's sort of soft and wet. I'm going to have to research this one a little more. This is the first year I've found these and I seem to be finding a lot of them. Big old soybean field. This is what it's like where I live. This is what it used to be like. A big checkerboard of woods and field. You look at it from an aerial photo and it looks like a big chess or checkerboard. But I'm going to move on. Here's another interesting plant. And I'm not 100% sure that's what it is. But I think I saw Iowa Woodsman. I think he did a YouTube video where he made some cordage out of this. And I can't remember if he called it buttonweed. And I'm not 100% sure this is what he was using. But I believe this is it. It gets these unique seed pods. Really distinct. I first found this this spring because it was uh, last year's plant and these seed pods were still on it. It was dead. And uh, I tore some off and it seemed like it would make good cordage because there are some fibers in here. Or at least a decent makeshift cordage if you didn't have anything else. But that's just another one of the plants you find along your way and kind of perks your interest and you have to go back and look through the books and talk to people and find out for sure if it's what you think it is or if it's just for the use of making cordage you really don't need to ID it unless it's poison ivy or something that could give you a rash but when it comes to cordage I usually just take plants and start tearing them apart and see if it has fibers in the stem that I can use to make cordage there's all different kinds of plants and stuff you can use to make cordage with so learning to ID a plant just for the purpose of making cordage is not entirely necessary mainly just get out in the woods and start pulling plants apart and see if they have the characteristics you want for cordage which is generally long stringy strands of plant fibers there's a big old poke bush boy that's unmistakable gets these berries on it which turn a dark purple like the stem but that just stands out there's nothing else <clears throat> nothing else that looks like that some more small blackberries Mm. but I'm looking for the big ones and they're right up here one thing there's there's getting to be less and less farm fields around here most of the farm fields are becoming golf courses and subdivisions and strip malls now but you know <clears throat> if you do find one Respect the farmer and don't just go tromping through his field and ruining his crop. I'm sticking along the edge here where the deer run and it's pretty much already beaten down. I'm trying to be careful as I can not to crush this guy's crop. I mean, it's a huge field. I'm sure if I walked through it, it wouldn't damage it that much, but it's more of a respect thing you know if you do that 
people tend to be a little more acceptable of letting you go on their property so just keep that in mind you know and if you're out on somebody's property don't just go trespassing get permission it makes it better for all of us because you get one trespasser the farmer or whoever it is gets upset and he doesn't want to let anybody else come back into his property to hunt or fish or gather or anything so just keep that in mind we're all living on this earth together. Try to make it as peaceful as possible. Respect each other's property and things will be better for us all.